I made a similar video to this 9 months ago. However, YoYo Games has decided to add a few more things to do before you can compile your game to Linux. So if you are using a version of Game Maker that was released after March of 2022, the 2022.3 version, then this video is up to date with all we will need to get started. This video is based off of the official documentation from YoYo, and the link to that is in the description down below as a handy resource. However, before we get started, this video is split up into multiple chapters, so if you need to skip around, this video is set up to where you can do that easily. With that, we will be covering where to download VirtualBox and Ubuntu, I am not going to go over the installing of VirtualBox, setting up your Ubuntu VM, installing the packages along with the new ones required, connecting Game Maker and the VM, and compiling your game to Linux. With that, let's get started. In order to get started, you are first going to need to download VirtualBox from virtualbox.org. Side note, if you want to use another program like Hyper-V, I'm sure there are tutorials out there for setting those up, but essentially, setting up the virtual machine is going to be pretty similar to this, and then once we're in the OS, it's pretty straightforward. Next, we are going to need Ubuntu. Go ahead and go to ubuntu.com and then go to downloads. I'd recommend downloading the most recent LTS or long-term support version. Although do note that I'm using an older version of Ubuntu in this video. It shouldn't make a difference, but please, if you are using an older version, make sure it is up to date and read the guide from YoYo Games down in the description because certain versions may require extra steps. I'm only using an older version because the ISO file is about 4GB and I simply did not want to wait on that to download again. Once you're in VirtualBox, click on New to create a new virtual machine. You can call it whatever you want, but VirtualBox is smart and if you call it something like Ubuntu or Linux, it's going to recognize that you are wanting to install a Linux system. But make sure the type is set to Linux and the version is set to Ubuntu 64-bit, but even Oracle 64-bit will work too. For memory, this is how much RAM you're going to allocate to the machine. I'd recommend bumping it up to 2048 megabytes if you have 8 gigabytes of RAM in your computer, and 4096 megabytes if you have 16 gigs or more. Next, we need to create a virtual hard disk, so go ahead and create one now. Just use the selected VDI option and choose dynamically allocated. Next, I would recommend giving Ubuntu about 15 to 20 gigabytes of disk space on your hard drive. Last time I think I used 12, but I found out that, you know, just updating the VM and stuff in the future, it's gonna run out of space and you'll keep on getting those warnings. So I recommend going ahead and giving it a little more than you think you'll need. Now go ahead and click create. Select the VM and then click on settings and in settings we are going to do the following. Go to network and under adapter 1 make sure where it says attached to, make sure it says bridged adapter. Go into system and then to processor and change the processors to 2. This will allocate 2 CPU cores to the VM. Then go into storage and under controller IDE select where it says empty. And then where it says optical drive, click on the little blue disk beside it and click choose a disk file and select your Ubuntu ISO. Next, once we're all finished, go ahead and click start. It is going to perform a few little operations before it boots into Ubuntu. Once you get to the install page, go ahead and select your language if you'd like, and then click on the Install Ubuntu button. Select your keyboard layout. Now, Ubuntu is pretty smart, and all of this should be all correct for you, but just double check, and then go ahead and click Continue. Then, I'd recommend choosing the Minimal Installation option over the Normal. This is just a virtual machine for game makers, so we aren't going to need media players and other apps like that. Just the basics will do. And then under other options, I'd recommend checking the download updates while installing and install third-party software, just because it might install some drivers that allow the VM to pass through some stuff more seamlessly, like internet, and then it might just overall help the VM run a bit better. Go ahead and click continue. For installation type, go ahead and choose erase disk and install Ubuntu. This way you don't have to mess around with any partitions or anything, and we already allocated about 20 gigabytes to the VM, so this will ensure that it uses all of that 20 gigabytes. 
Don't worry, this isn't going to affect your Windows. So just go ahead and click Install Now and then click Continue in the box that comes up. Next, go ahead and choose your time zone. Click Continue and then we get to fill out some basic information. Go ahead and enter your name. Ubuntu then typically fills out the rest, but go ahead and feel free to change the name of the computer and your username. Next, create a password. Since this is a VM, I don't really care too much about how secure this is, so I just made my username Micah and my password Ubuntu. And for convenience, I just chose to uh, log in automatically, and this is completely up to you, but um, go ahead and click continue, and then Ubuntu should finish up installing. Once it says installation complete, go ahead and click restart now. This will restart the VM. Ubuntu will tell you to remove the installation medium, and I'm sure there's a way to properly do this in VirtualBox, but I just click the X at the top of the window, and then select the power off machine option before clicking OK. Now if you want, and this isn't bad to double check, but go into the settings of the VM, and under storage make sure that the disk we loaded a few minutes ago says empty, and then go ahead and click on start one more time. Once you're back into Ubuntu, just skip through the little start page. I personally recommend not sending any info to Canonical. Number one, they don't need to know much about this system, and number two, it's a VM, so it doesn't really matter all that much. After that, we should land on the desktop. If you want, you can go into the display settings and up the resolution of the screen. That's what I did. It makes it a bit bigger and more easy on the eyes. Now we can get into installing the packages. Now it is time to set up Ubuntu so that GameMaker can connect and compile with it. Go ahead and click the nine squares at the bottom of the screen and open the terminal. Now linked below is the YoYo Games official guide on this, and that has all the commands we're going to need, so I will recommend pulling that up in the web browser if you'd like. And we are going to start by installing these packages. First, however, we are just going to check for some updates, so type sudo apt-get update. Hit the enter key, and then enter your password. For me, it was Ubuntu, and it should only ask for this once. So after this, installation should be a breeze. Next, type sudo apt-get install build-essential. Hit enter and then y for yes at the prompt. And this is essentially the formula for all of these packages that we're going to install. Next is sudo apt-get install openssh-server. Hit the enter key and then hit y for yes and then we move on. Next is sudo apt-get install clang. Hit the enter key and hit y and then we move on. Next is sudo apt-get install libssl-dev, hit the enter key, and then we move on. Next is sudo apt-get install libxrandr-dev, hit the enter key, and then hit yes, and then we move on. Next is sudo apt-get install libxxf86vm-dev, hit the enter key, and then hit y for yes, and then we move on. Next is sudo apt-get install libopenal-dev, hit the enter key, and then hit y for yes, and then we move on. Next, we type in sudo apt-get install libgl1-mesa-dev, hit the enter key, and then hit y for yes, and then we move on. Next is sudo apt-get install libglu1-mesa-dev. Hit the enter key, and then we move on. Next is sudo apt-get install zlib1g-dev. Hit the enter key, and then we move on. Next is sudo apt-get install libcurl4-openssl-dev. Hit the enter key, hit y, and then we move on. Next is sudo apt-get install ffmpeg. Hit the enter key, hit Y for yes, and then we move on. Now we need to install the packages required for versions 2022.3 and onwards. Now if you compare this tutorial to my last, you'll notice that we never needed to install the FFmpeg package. This might be something that YoYo just silently slipped in there, but anyways, let's get into setting up these tools. Now, YoYo's website isn't going to tell you this, but we actually need to install another package called curl on our VM. 
We installed a similar package, but that package won't allow us to use the curl command. So go ahead and type sudo apt install curl and then install it. But make sure you use apt this time instead of apt-get. Next, I recommend just copying these commands from the website since they're pretty long, and we're just going to paste it in and run it. The first command is sudo make dir slash opt slash steam dash runtime. This is going to make a directory for our steam tools. Then after that, copy the next curl command that uh, gets the repo from steam powered. Lastly, we need Linux deploy and app image. So go ahead and copy the wget command that gets Linux deploy. And then copy and paste the sudo install command. Now for app image, run the wget that gets app image from the GitHub repo. And then again, copy and paste the sudo install command for app image. Now we're all finished. Now we are ready to connect with GameMaker. So go ahead and open up your project if it isn't open already. Then head to the target button in the top right corner. Switch platform to Ubuntu, and then right beside where it says device, click the little pencil. Now click on add new device and fill out the display name. This can be whatever you want. Then for the host name, we are going to go ahead and go back into our VM, and in the console we're going to type IP ADDR show. And then where it says to, we are then going to look down a little further to where it says INET, and then type in that IP address into GameMaker. For me, it was 192.168.1.101. Do not worry, this is a private IP address on your network. This is not a public address. Lastly, fill out the username and password of the Ubuntu VM, and then click on Test Connection. After a second or two, it should come back with Connection Successful. Go ahead and click OK. Then at the bottom, click Apply, and then clicking OK should exit the window, and we are now all set. Now we are almost done. You can go ahead and click on run and after a few moments you should see that your game has started in the Ubuntu VM. Now in order to compile I would recommend going back into the target settings and under output choose YYC. Now the reasoning for this is that YYC is a lot faster than the VM option because VM is running interpreted code which is a bit slower but better for development. But YYC is actually fully compiled code. I would also recommend clicking the clean button or the dust pan in order to clear the project cache. This will usually stop a lot of game breaking errors that can happen if the cache is not cleared out. Then up in the top go into build and then create executable to which at this point it will ask you to name the file. And then we have a compiled build of your game for Linux. Now that is all for this video. I will tell you that running the app image file we will need to change a few settings in the properties. So if you bring this file into your VM, and there are many ways to do this, simply right click on the file, go to properties, and in the permissions tab, make sure that allow executing file as program is checkmarked. This varies a bit on different Linux environments, but there's a link below to the official app image website, and that is just some simple instructions, and I put similar instructions on my game's itch.io page. So that has been the tutorial thus far. I hope this helps you out in your game making adventures. Please leave a like and share this video if you found it helpful, and please don't forget to subscribe. I've been Mike the Maniac, and I'll see you all next time.